let's tackle the first exercise, exercise one, right? So print all numbers in the int number stream. Okay, it's fairly simple because we have seen this this code earlier. So I get the int number stream. Okay, now I have the stream, and now I need to do an action for each element. So which is where the for each comes in, and the for each takes in the element itself as an argument. So the element becomes an argument and I can have a lambda, which does system dot out dot print and off the element. Okay, so this is this is basically how, how you do this. You can, of course, change this to just be the method reference. System dart out, colon, colon, println. This works fine too. So there's a method reference is basically a way for you to say, whatever is the argument that's passed in, I'm basically going to pass that same argument blindly to the method. Okay, when you have cases like that, you can use method references. I am going to use this because it's a little more obvious what's going on here. And I'm also going to, this is going to lead into reactive programming. So it's it's good to have that. So it's very clear what's going on. Your IDE might complain about this. It might give you a warning and say, hey, you're you're using a, a Lambda where you could, you could use a method reference. I've turned it off because I teach this a lot and I prefer to make this very clear. If you have it there, you can choose to use method reference or just ignore the error. That's fine. Ignore the warning, it's fine. All right, so that's the first one. The next one, print numbers from the in number streams that are less than five. So basically what you have here is a condition on each element. If any element doesn't meet the condition, you don't want it to be printed. But if an element meets the condition, you want it to be printed. So what you do is, again, you do stream sources dot in number stream. And now I need to filter. Right, I need to filter out the things that do not meet this condition. So basically, I say, what what is the predicate that needs to apply? Right. So I say for each number, I'm going to do number should be less than five. Right. We need everything that's less than five. All right. And then over here, I'm going to do a for each again, which is basically this same thing. Okay. And also, it's good to have the same variable namings here, but fine. <clears throat> Let me actually do this. This is number. That's one advantage for uh, method references. You don't need to think about the variable. All right. Next. Print the second and the third numbers in int number stream that's greater than five, right? Keep scanning, right? Every time you get a number that's greater than five, you have to count it somehow. Like if you're doing imperative programming, this is how you do it, right? You would somehow count. Okay, this is the first number that's greater than five. The second number that's greater than five, I have a count. And then if count, every time you increment the count, and if count equals two, then do this. If count is greater than two, then skip. That's that's how you would do with imperative programming. But you don't do this with declarative programming with, with streams. So here's what you do. first. You get the stream that is all the elements that's greater than five. Okay. So again, it is something like this. Here it is going to be. This is going to give me a stream of all the elements that's greater than five. Now, what it says is I want the second and the third numbers, right? Which means I'm going to have to skip the first number. Well, thankfully, there is a skip API. Right? I'm going to say skip of one. So I don't want the first number, so I'm going to skip that. Now I have a stream of all the numbers. At this point, I have a stream of all numbers that are greater than five, except for the first one, right? Ignoring the first one. But now this could be more than two. What we want is only the second and the third numbers, which means I want to limit the stream to just two. And after that, I'm done. Okay. So again, there is a limit method as well that says I just want two of those. And now I can use the for each. All right, this is making sense. So what I'm doing here is using this declarative paradigm, using streams in order to get exactly what I want without having to deal with loops, without having to kind of keep track of the count and all that stuff. There are different ways you can do this. Like for example, you can do a for each over here and then you can check, okay, 
again, like I said, keep that, keep track of the count and then increment it and all that stuff. This is a much easier way of doing things. Since you already have streams anyway, it's good to plug in these, these declarative way of doing things. So it's easier to read and you can immediately tell what's happening just by looking at this, right? I'm doing a filter, I'm skipping the first one and I'm limiting to two, which means I'm taking the second and the third and then I'm printing this, which is, which is exactly what we want here. All right. And again, think about this, have this, you know, kind of sink into your mind if you're not used to this kind of programming, because you're going to be doing this kind of stuff with Reactive. So it helps. All right. So uh, the next one is print the first number in the int number stream that is greater than five. Okay. Now we don't need a multiple numbers. We just need one. Okay. And if nothing is found, you should do minus one, right? If, if something is found, do that number, you know, print the number. Otherwise, print minus one, which means you can get that number and print it. So here's, here's how it works. Again, we're not using a loop. There is something called find first, which allows you to get just the first element of a stream, all right? So what I do is get that first element of the stream. So uh, this is the stream. And here I'm going to do dot find first, which is going to get me the, the very first element in the stream. And now I'm going to do dot or else, which basically means if I don't find this number, I want to have a, a fallback. So there is a or else operator, which allows you to do that fallback. And then now what I have is if you look at the, the return type for this thing, if you introduce local variable, what you have is an integer, right? You have the value. And now I can do the sys out of the value. All right. Does this make sense? So this is how I'm able to get the first number that's greater than five. And if nothing is found, print minus one. And notice here, I didn't have to, not only did I not have to do loops, I didn't have to keep track of state somewhere. Like, okay, what is the nth number that I got? Okay. Doing that if number is greater than, and if count is greater than, none of that stuff. It's just all, it's all using these uh, stream programming paradigms. I did mention that this is a prerequisite for this course, but I understand that this might not be familiar to a lot of people, which is why they're kind of doing this exercise as warm up, all right? Okay, now, next one. Print the first names of all the users in the user stream, right? The user stream is stream sources dot user stream, right? This gives me all the users. If I were to do, you know, you know, for each and then map it to you, I'm going to get just the users, but I want to print just the first name. There are a couple of ways I can do this. I'm going, I can do a for each of a user, and then I can do sys out of user dot get first name. This is one option. Or the other option is to use a map operator. Both of them are fine. So I can do a dot map of user to user dot get first name. So what a map does is it basically replaces the value in the stream with the new value that you're sending, right? So basically this stream is user instances, right? This one is going to replace each user instance with the first name of that user. Okay, now this stream is not a stream of user instances anymore. It's a stream of first name strings. So I'm going to do user or basically sys out of is going to be username. I'm going to do username. All right. The last one, like I said, this is probably the most trickiest one because we don't typically run into these use cases with, with collection streams. It's not very common, but this is very, very common in the reactive world. So which is the reason why I added this exercise. So what we want to do is print the first names in the user streams, not for everyone, but for users that have IDs from the number stream. All right. So we have two streams that you want to somehow combine together to filter out one of these. Now, how do you do it? Let's say have stream sources dot user stream. This is going to give me all the users. Actually, let me start the other way. I'm going to do int number stream. 
Okay. Yeah, I think this is better. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get all the IDs and then map it to users. That's a good way of doing it, right? I could say stream sources dot int number stream, right? So there's an ID. I'm going to see if there is a corresponding user in in the user stream. Okay. So I'm going to do a dot map of ID to somehow get user. Is this possible? This is not possible because this is not a single call now. It is actually another stream. Okay. So I can, what I can do is get that user, right? So I'm going to say stream sources dot user stream dot filter a user that has user dot get ID equal to the ID. Okay. Now what I'm doing is I'm for each ID, I'm getting the stream dot filter and get that particular user. Right. Now the problem is this is actually another stream. So if I were to map to the actual value, I could use a map, right? Let's say there's an object over here. I can, I can use a map for it. But now what I'm doing is I'm actually mapping to a stream. What is the result of this thing? There's actually a stream. It doesn't give me an, a user. It gives me a user stream. So what I need to do is I need to use flat map. Okay. Flat map is a way where you can map to a stream, but then you flatten it out. So you're not mapping to an individual stream. You're not replacing each ID in the stream with another stream itself. You're replacing each ID in the stream with the result of that stream, which is the user, which is what flat map does, right? This is something which throws a lot of people off. So I want to make sure you understand what flat map is. Okay. If the right hand side of a map is the actual value, then you can just do map. But if the right hand side of the map is the result of a stream, you're basically saying, okay, take each ID and replace it with a stream, which is not what you want. You want to take each ID and replace it with what the stream returns. So you're saying go flatten it, which is what flat map does. Okay. And now, now we have this. I'm going to do a, I'm going to do a map. Wait, I think I have to close one more parentheses here. There you go. And I'm going to do a map. Now I have the user. I'm going to do a map of user dot get first name. This I can do because get first name isn't going to return me another stream. It's just going to return me a string. Unlike this one, which actually gave me a stream and I had to flatten it. All right. And then I'm going to do the for each again. Okay. This is one way to do it. There are multiple ways you can do this. It is not the only way, but this just want to, I, I wanted to find some excuse for showing you flat map. There are, there are other ways to do it. Yes. Any match is a good, is a good one as well. Uh, that's, that's a good thing. Thank you. Place this here. This is, there's another thing. This one has, this one is a little buggy because you could have no users. You could have multiple users. So this one is a little bit of a contrived example. This is another way you can do this. Okay. So use a stream. You're filtering with, you remember how I told you a flat map is a way to flatten a stream. Well, what you can do is instead you can use any match, which is going to give you the user instead of returning a stream. Okay. So what you're doing is for each user, you're searching for IDs and what you're doing is in the int number stream, is there any integer which matches this predicate? Okay. Which is the ID is equal to the get ID for that user. If it is, then you're going to just return that user. So filter is basically doing just this very fine thing. It's not even returning the user. It's basically a Boolean, right? And my apologies. So you're filtering this out. And then now you have just the users and for each you're, you're printing it out. Ideally, the way this question is phrased, this is probably a better answer. So thank you for posting that. This was, again, I should probably rethink this example. I was thinking of some contrived way to introduce a flat map use case. Okay. But you understood what a flat map is. That's, that's what is the takeaway. But for this particular thing, this is probably a better way, right? You're taking, finding the users that have ID from the number stream. This is the more precise way of doing this. What you're doing is you're finding the user by filter with IDs 
which are in the number stream, which is using the any match on the number stream. Is there any number in the ID stream which matches, in the number stream that matches? If so, you're filtering those users and then you're doing a for each. It's more closer to the problem statement, all right? But yeah, the, the reason why I brought this up is to introduce flat map. How does flat map work? Flat map works when you're mapping to a value which is not a proper value, but it is a stream instead, okay? When you need to map to a stream, then what you're gonna get back, let's say I didn't do this. Let's say I did map here, okay? What do you think each value here is? Let's, let me change this to value. Call this value one. What do you think this is? This is a stream of user, that's right. The, what you get is a stream because you're saying each ID, I'm going to replace it with a stream, which is not what you want. What you want is the user, which is basically saying, get me what the stream has. Don't get me the stream itself, okay? And that's the reason why you're saying, I want to flatten that stream, which is what flat map does, okay? When you do this, what you're gonna get back is the user. You see this? It says type as a user. Whereas over here, when you did a map, what you got back was stream of user. Okay, so flat map allows you to flatten that thing. So that's an important concept. Remember, which is kind of why I had this example. Thank you for the much better <laughs> answer to that question. Yes, it reduces stream of user to user because you, you it typically tends to happen, right? So when you're when you're doing a map and you have you're mapping each individual value, right? You're saying instead of this one value in the stream, replace it with this uh, one other value, right? You can't say take each one value and replace it with a stream. It's kind of like you have a stream of streams in that point, like an array of arrays, right? You need to flatten it, which is what flat map does. It's basically like saying, okay, I know what I'm asking you to replace is actually a stream, but don't just replace the item with the stream itself replace it with what that stream is returning, okay, what that stream is emitting. That's what flat map does. All right, so this is exercise one. 